Welcome everybody to the Northwest Division contest. I am so excited that you are all here and I am really excited for this contest to begin. Uh, I am Rose Schultz. I am the contest chair for the contest this afternoon. And I am delighted to have you all here. This is going to be so much fun. Um, I think I know we have just had the announcement to uh, silence our phones just so that we can give all of our speakers um, their, our full attention and, and you will be reminded again. So. I do want to introduce all of our dignitaries uh, that we have here with us this afternoon. We are privileged to have our di uh, district director, Ethel Goatee. Yeah. Woo! And we have our program quality director, Barbara Beckley. Woo! Woo! Director Iqbal Atcha. And Division Directors, Northwest Division, German Zambrano. Central North, Don Williams. Good afternoon, everyone. At this Good time, afternoon. I'd like to 
tell you, we're going to have two contests today. First, we're going to have the evaluation contest. And how that will work is we'll have a target speaker come up, give up a speech of five to seven minutes, and then our six evaluation contestants will have five minutes to write their evaluations, and they'll come up and give their presentations. After that, we'll have a break, and then we'll have our humorous speech contest. The time frame on the contest, the speeches are five to seven minutes, and uh, what I want to go through now is the order of speaking. First, for the evaluation contest, first evaluator will be Jerry Evans. Second evaluator will be Rick Westcott. Third evaluator will be Greg Thompson. Fourth evaluator will be Linda Enigenberg. Fifth evaluator, Valerie Fusan, and sixth, Diane Bolash. The speaking order for the humorous contest, first, Jerry Evans. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Second, Piyush Nikra. Third, Linda Enigenberg. Fourth, Rudy Segoyeva, fifth, John Labe, and sixth, Dan Extra. And the contestants, timers, ballot counters, sergeant at arms have all been briefed prior to the beginning of the contest. Everyone is aware of the Toastmaster rules that govern this contest. No one should enter or leave this room during the contestants' presentations. You may do so if time permits during the minute of silence between presentations. With that said, let the contest begin. In order to have an evaluation contest, and give me a second here. We need to have a target speak, speaker. And I'm, I've got it right here. I hit it on myself. Today's target speaker is Melissa Mayer. And it's Meyer. Why not Meyer. Meyer? I apologize. Melissa Meyer. Can you please tell us the title of the speech? I, Melissa, what is the title? Participate, participate in the process. Participate in the process. Participate in the process. Melissa Meyer. We, the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessing of liberty for ourselves and our posterity. Contest Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, the framers of the Constitution of the United States of America were not hired consultants flown in from another land to swoop in and save the day, chosen for their expertise in writing rules and regulations for other people to live by. No, they were not you or me, but they were the we, all of us, of their time, and they participated in the process. A few weeks ago, at the Beyond the Seas meeting, our own and Sonia Gibbs <coughs> shared with us about how participating in the process <coughs> not only affects the people participating, but generations to come. 
and Sonia told us a rather humorous story. When she was younger, a child, her mother used to take her to many parades. Now, her mother was a union member, and, and Sonia enjoyed these parades immensely. There was a lot of excitement and activity, and the, the environment it was somewhat like a Toastmasters meeting. A lot was being accomplished. Little did Aunt Sonia know, at the time, she was actually marching in a picket line. She was participating in the process of changing the way employees were compensated, how they received their benefits, how they, their standard of living was in, increased because of even a child participating in the process. And generations to come are grateful for those willing participants. Now, and Sonia was not the first child to participate in the process. A few years ago, I traveled to Birmingham, Alabama with my oldest son's class. We visited the 16th Street Baptist Church. This is a church that was bombed during the Civil Rights Movement. Four young girls lost their lives in that bombing. Across the street from that church is the Kelly Ingram Park. Now this park was a gathering place for high school students and school children that were willing to participate in the process, even unto death if necessary. We had the privilege of hearing from some of these former foot soldiers, as they were called. They told us how they felt during that time while they were participating in this and what was going on, how they sometimes were afraid but mostly they felt very proud and accomplished to be a part of the process, and they were glad. And all of us in this room benefit from them participating in that process. We have our choice of where we want to live, we can go to any school that we desire, and we have our right to vote, which cannot be denied <coughs> us because of those willing participants in the process. Our vote, our one single vote, has the power to change history. There are many stories of one vote changing history. Oliver Cromwell taking control of England. German not becoming the language of the land here in the United States. <laughs> Andrew Johnson escaping impeachment. I have to tell you, though, these stories are all false. However, your one vote, and your one vote, and yours, and yours, and yours, and mine, added to all of the one votes of all of our spheres of influence, does make a difference. If it doesn't seem to make a difference in the outcome of the election all the time, it does, however, make a difference in each one of us. We have stood for our beliefs. We've let our voices be heard. And we have stopped the old adage, if you are not willing to stand for something, you will fall for anything. I beseech you, my fellow Toastmasters, my friends, in the words of John F. Kennedy, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. I encourage you to participate in the process and see your world changed.
somewhere in their packet. I think it's James. Instead of sitting around in silence, what I'd like to do is ask Melissa to come up and we'll get to know a little bit more about her. Why don't you uh, let us know how long have you been in Postmasters, what club you belong to, and what, um, what have you worked towards either? I joined Toastmasters in August, and I'm a member of the Beyond the Seas Toastmasters. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Oh, and um, I am working towards my CC, I believe. That's yes. Right. Yes. And this is speech number four for me. Okay. Thank you. What prompted you to create this speech? What is the story that got you to? Um, I was just looking in the, the project at, um, you know, organizing your speech and, well, the speech was originally for the third project, which was to um, have a theme to get people to do something. So I wanted to encourage people to participate in the process in whatever, whatever um, area they could, especially in voting and being involved in our political process. About. Okay. Now, under notable accomplishments and awards, it says here you graduated culinary school with honors and an outstanding performer awards for speech and drama. Let's start with the important thing culinary school. <laughs> <laughs> what school did you go to? I went, it's now it's under Le Cordon Bleu in mm -hmm. Chicago Cooking and Hospitality Institute. It was called when I graduated a few years ago, just a couple of years ago. When did you graduate? In 99. 99, okay. And are you in the culinary industry now? I am not. I am in sales. I went from the culinary industry into banking, so I was told I now know how to cook books. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Humorous contest. Is yes. Okay, I just want to. And under Outstanding Performer Awards for Speech and Drama in School, have you, what performances on stage have you been a part of? Uh, a little bit of everything. I've done uh, for contests, dramatic, dramatic acting and public address speaking, mm. and then involved in plays and musicals all the way through up to high school. If there was one play or musical that you were involved with, what is the first one that comes to mind, and why does that one come to your mind that you are most proud of? Uh, the first one that came to my mind, I was a guard at the Emerald City, just because I grew up reading the Wizard of Oz books, you know, and just loved that, and to be involved in the production of it. Good. Okay. Now, under here, what inspires you the most it says, desire to be a good example for my children and others. Tell us a little bit about your children. Uh, well, I have one here with me who critiqued me already, so the evaluators are <laughs> <laughs> I have an 11-year-old and a 14-year-old, and um, I have two just want to be an set an example for them to be involved again and be involved in the political process and you know um, just being good citizens and good people and don't want them to have to look to somebody else to get that good example so overcoming fears public speaking and things like that okay very good favorite quote says here by Ronald Reagan and the most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm here from the government, and I'm here to help. <laughs> <laughs> I basically feel that way. Uh, I, there are so many, and I just I picked that one mainly because it 
it has a serious side to it and it has a humorous side to it. Um, I definitely admire Ronald Reagan and admire how he can, or how he was able to put a, a humorous spin on serious issues and things for us to think about. Okay. What I'd like to do as a thank you from Rose in the contest is present you with a little gift for Aww. stepping up and being our target speaker. Thank you. Five minutes are up, and what we will do now is we will call our first evaluator, and they will come up, they will give their evaluation, and after the evaluation, there will be one minute of silence, and then we'll call in our second evaluator to work through our six evaluators at that time. At this time, I'd like to call our first evaluator up, which will be Jerry Evans. <coughs> Evaluator number one, Jerry Evans. Jerry Evans. We the people to form the most perfect union. Melissa, participation in the process. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guest, we can all participate in the process. Your opening, I think your opening grabbed us right from the beginning because when you started talking about the framers of the Constitution, originally I thought with your title, where is she going to take us with this process? But as you started to get into it and talk about the perfect union and the framers of the Constitution of the U.S., and then you supported that. So what I want to do is I want to evaluate you to validate what you did really, really well. So you had a strong opening. Also, as soon as you had your strong opening, you engaged pretty much everyone in the audience. You had excellent contact with everyone in the audience. That's a skill for what I believe is a little bit newer Toastmasters. So that's something you can grow on and you can build on in your Toastmasters journey. So let's talk about the body of your speech. You used all the appropriate gestures so that your gestures matched up with your words. Excellent use of that. And then you got into what I love is storytelling. Because you talked about Ansonia and that her mother, how she had taken her to the parade. And she thought she was just going to the parade to have a great time. But all of a sudden, she realized that she was here to march for something in terms of workmen, I'm sorry, for uh, compensation rights. And then you talked about Birmingham. I could relate to Birmingham because I think during the Civil Rights Movement, you made an emphasis on that so that also helped to support we can all be part of that process. And then as you started toward the end of your speech, you brought in examples. Oliver Cromwell, German could have been the language of the U.S. That was kind of scary. And then you mentioned <laughs> Andrew Johnson. But I particularly love when you said our vote, your votes, all of our votes make a difference. And that's true. One person can make a difference. And we know how one person can make a difference in our lives, especially in the context of Toastmasters. So excellent use of that. When you get to your conclusion and you said stand for something or you fall for anything, that's actually one of my favorite quotes. And I think that speaks volumes about all of us. Because what do we stand for? What standards, especially as Toastmasters, do we stand up for? Do we stand up for excellence? Do we stand up for a bar that's down here? Or do we set the high bar up here? I think the framers <coughs> of the Constitution, that's what they really meant. That we want to frame it so that we set the bar up here as citizens. The part that drew me in to the very beginning is when you had JFK's quote. I mean, I think everyone in this room can probably relate to that. So I think if you work on a couple quick things, I think if you could still use a little bit more dynamic use of the stage, I think you could <coughs> emphasize the story, maybe draw upon that a little bit more. And I look forward to the next speech because we can be part of the process. And thank you for bringing that to our attention. 
Mr. Contest. Mr. Contest. At this time, I'd like to call for evaluator number two, Rick Westcott. Rick Westcott, evaluator number two. One word. I can describe your speech. Inspiring. Fellow Toastmasters, Mr. Toastmaster, especially when you know the same. I want to go out and vote today. That's how I feel. That's how you move me with this speech. You, some of your strengths of your speech is your gestures are so well connected. I mean, when you talked about from your voice, you went like this. You were writing and you put the punctuation in and went part of the speech. And then you actually went through and said, your vote, your vote, one vote. And that was just great gestures. Great gestures, keep those. Another thing that's really strong about your speech, it captivated me, is your smile. I mean, you had such a friendly countenance and you just smiled all the way through. And it just kept my, I, I had a hard time taking notes. And then you used the speaking area very well. You started in the middle, then you went to the left, and you spoke here for a while. And then you went back over to the right, and you spoke there for a while. And you pulled the whole speech together. You started out with a quote, really recitation from our Constitution, and you ended with a quote from John F. Kennedy, which inspired me again. And that ending, this was an inspirational speech in my opinion, because the ending, you called us to action, says to vote. So I tried, and I really tried to look at areas of growth but I got to tell you, I didn't see any. So I can't really give you any there. Maybe I need some more evaluation experience to, to be able to recognize that in the future. But I thought you had a great speech. Keep smiling. It's a great speech. Use your gestures. Continue to use them the way you are. <coughs> and do more inspiring speeches because you're great at it. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster.
This time I would call evaluator number three, Greg Thompson. Greg Thompson, evaluator number three. Mr. Contest Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and especially Melissa. Melissa, that was really a great speech. Now, very few times as a Toastmaster, you are challenged by the speaker. Usually it's us against them, but now this speech was so well done that I'm challenged as an evaluator to find something with the speech. But my job as the evaluator is to definitely make your speech better and also to make you better. Now today, I am going to evaluate the speaker. The speech is all for itself, but the evaluator and the speaker, I like to say right now that I saw you doing a very good job. Some of the things that I saw that you did great, you had a nice smile. You looked comfortable on stage. You looked very comfortable. I thought that was really good. One of the things that you did that was excellent is that you made a point and then you moved. We call that moving with purpose. You did that on several occasions. Love that. It is very important, fellow Toastmasters, to find what's right with a speech instead of what's finding what's wrong. It's very important for the speaker to be built so that's what we're doing today, and that's what I'm doing today. Some of the things that I also saw that you did great, you had great gestures. I saw your hand movement. I saw some of the things you did. I thought that was excellent. You enunciated very, very well. Very nice smile as well. So you did a lot of things that I thought was very, very good. Your strengths are up there. And we must tell a speaker what her strengths are because they get to keep them in. If you don't tell a person what their strengths are, they may not know because we all have natural abilities as speakers. So as an evaluator, I have to let you know what your strengths are and for you to build on those strengths. Another thing you did well, I thought the speech was inspirational. Yes, it was very good. Vote, I like that. I also, I participated in the process. I do vote, so that's another good thing. One of the things that I saw that I think you can do really well at, or do better at, is you should have good eye contact with the audience. That's really, really important. And how do you do that, Melissa, is you catch somebody's eye, you hold it to bring them into your speech, and then you let them go. That is something well that you can do. Everything else I saw that you did was very excellent in very good time. I want you to continue to build on your strengths and confront your weaknesses. Mr. Toastmaster. And then again, 60 seconds of silence. This time I'd like to call evaluator number four, Linda Ennekenberg. Linda Ennekenberg, evaluator number four.
Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and Melissa. Where did you go? I thought I saw you sit down back there. Thank you for coming up and speaking. I was first struck, quite a bit struck, by your poise. You're definitely a seasoned speaker. You're not inexperienced. You came up here and immediately emoted poise and confidence. And I knew you had a message because I saw it in your face. You were very serious about the message you were giving. And opening up with the preamble said this is going to be a serious speech, although interesting and entertaining. Now, for the audience, entertaining does not always mean humorous. We laugh. Entertaining means you're drawing me in and I'm listening to you. Outstanding job coming up here and being poised and getting my attention with the preamble, which was extremely well done. I also want to point out that your voice is one of your best attributes. I don't know if you've had this relayed to you in an evaluation before, but it is, and I think the audience will agree with me, won't you? It's soothing. Is it soothing? You want to listen. I want to relax and not fall asleep, but I find you very comforting, and it in turn gives you an air of authority and credibility about what you're speaking. I have a couple opportunities for you that you might want to incorporate into your speech. I love that you open up with a preamble, but I would have rather heard a story or an anecdote. Because what I was doing after the preamble was thinking, where is she going with this? What's Melissa want us as an audience to take away? And it was, you were making me work too hard, and I'm lazy, I don't want to work hard. I want you to tell me from the get-go you're about participating, your speech is about participating. Tell me what you want me to get out of it. Give us a roadmap and start with a story. For example, a voting story. X vote, it was one vote apart. And I ran into a person who told me they didn't vote. Right away, not only I know you want us to vote, but you're telling me in a story and anecdote, which is the best way to relay a message, what you want us to do. You want us to vote because we make a difference. Your gestures, when you talked about speaking, very meaningful. But I felt you could have used a little less of this and a little more of comfort, and then when you make a gesture, make it meaningful. Your message, I want to close with your message. Because the voice that you used for your message was not big in vocal variety. She didn't go up, she didn't go down, she didn't go all around, she wasn't all over the map. It was measured and steady. And kudos for that, because that is appropriate for the serious nature of the message. But I really like that you geared your voice, your mannerisms toward the speech, work on weaving in more stories and anecdotes. Melissa, I can't wait to hear you speak again. This time, I'd like to call evaluator number five, Valerie Fusa. Valerie Fusa, evaluator number five.
tired. I wanted to do something, so I've got to think of what, what I want to do yet. And I want to, um, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, and especially Melissa. What an incredible topic. I really liked how you brought a lot of energy and passion to your speech. And you were, it was just motivating. One of the things that I really liked was your structure. You had a great opening. We the people. It drew me in. And then you had a great close. You had a call to action, a very strong call to action. And our, our vote has the power to change history. I mean, it's just wonderful words. What the stories that you were telling us, the historical stories, I didn't know some of those stories. And it was wonderful to listen to them. And you had that great structure, it made a point. The other thing I liked is that your topic was audience-centered. You actually were looking at us and you were telling us, we have to do something. Our vote matters. And how important is that, especially in this time with the elections coming up? Our vote does matter because we can make a change. The other thing I really liked about it is your, your confidence. You were very powerful. You have a great stage presence. And you used the whole stage and you looked at everyone. And then when you said, you can vote, you can vote, you can vote, again, it brought us into your speech. And I, it made me feel like I really wanted to do something. The, I have a couple recommendations for you. Your story, I would have loved to hear your story. Why this topic? What, in, what has happened in your life that you want to relay this to us? And are you participating in something? One thing you could have done that would, I think, open it up to this audience is maybe refer it back to our leadership. Do we participate here also and make that comparison. How are you participating in the process? You kept using that over and over again, so that was drawing me in. So I think that you you had this powerful speech and you could have brought us in a little bit more by comparing <coughs> it to us. And have the other thing is to have a stronger call to action. Tell us what to do. You just said participate in the process. I think if you told us, pick one thing vote in the next coming election, or get, get active in Toastmasters. Give us something to do. So again, if you use some of these, these tips, again, strong, your strong stories, your structure, your audience centered, your confidence are really powerful. And then if you tell us a little bit about your story, and you would make this a little bit stronger, speech for the next time. And then focus it on us. What can we do? Um, Mr. Toastmaster. One minute of silence. I'd like to call our final evaluator, Diane Bola. Diane Bola, evaluator number six. Melissa, thank you. 
on behalf of our Toastmaster, all our fellow Toastmasters, and every guest here, we appreciate the courage that it takes to come into an unknown and choose to reveal your thoughts to the world. So first and foremost, thank you. As an evaluator, I always believe that my job is to identify the strengths and the skills and some suggestions or some confusion I experienced in following your speech. And to do that, I always go back to the Competent Communicator Manual and the three categories of projects that are within that manual. The first <coughs> three speeches are first do it, which you did. Project number two and three are about creating structure and organization. You had oration in the beginning. You opened with words that are familiar to each and every one of us, and yet you gave it your own personal experience. And that was a lovely way, because it's familiar to all of us, but where are you going with it? So an engaging opening. In the body of your speech, you did what project number three suggests, organize your points and categorize them. Again, you organized around two different experiences, and your trip to Birmingham and your friends at your club, the experience that she related. Through those, you created a transition that helped us to follow because the benefits of participating we experience in future generations. So for the first category, it was lovely to see the structure and organization. I was a little, the only area in there that I was a little confused was the transition to the conclusion. So transitions are the way that we mark our organizational skills and transitions are, are either done by a direct statement, the next point I'd like to make, they can be marked by a pause, a sidestep. That's a transition technique also. And for people who know you, a deep pause and a change in inflection. But all in all, category one was great. The second category, the middle projects in the Competent Communicator Manual, four, five, and six, are creative vocabulary, and then use that vocabulary to stimulate vocal variety and body language. I do, as a body language guru, sort of, integrated body language is hard to come by. And the words that you chose helped to, pro to produce a dynamic experience for us. The third category of the competent communicator, I think, is the hardest. Projects 7 through 10 are about purpose. Are you informing us? Are you persuading us? Or are you inspiring us? That's where I had my questions. I wasn't certain what the call to action would be. But for any new Toastmasters, if you use that, those, that category and define your purpose to yourself, it will help with your transitions in the beginning. It will help to give more dynamic experience and more range to your vocal variety and your body language. And all in all, it gets us to do what you're calling us to do. Thank you so much. Toastmasters is a journey. It's been my honor to share this experience on yours. At this time, I would like silence while the judges have time to complete their ballot and they get collected to take as much time as they need.
Mr. Toastmaster, the ballots have all been collected. While we are waiting for the votes to be counted, we will hear from Barbara Beckley, who will give us all the exciting details of upcoming events in District 30. Barbara Beckley is our Participate in the process. I want to use that. I like that. Because I want everybody to think of November 7, 2015. Soar for success. Participate in the process. Our fall conference. I want everyone in here to participate. Can I get your vote? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I like that. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So that means y'all went on the website, you signed up. Your club's going, going, okay. Yeah, you're going to sign up and you're going to participate on November 7th, right? Because our winners from here will go and they will be participating in the process on November 7th. So we want to give them, you know, all the cheering and say, go, 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 just like the Cubs. We want to go, 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 go. So I want everybody to think of November 7th and our theme is Soar for Success. Why do you want to Soar for Success? We don't want to solve a failure. Right? <laughs> we want to be successful, right? That's what we're here for. That's why we're in Toastmasters, to so get your communication leadership skills together. So I, with a theme I thought really fit well with this year, and I want everybody, we do a soaring like eagles. So that goes with our district mission. And I want everybody to think about, I'm going to put from beginning to end. Morning time, has anybody here achieved an award this year, like a CC, a CL, ABL, whatever? Good. You are going to be invited to a special achievers breakfast that morning at 7 o'clock. Yum, yum. Yum, yum. <laughs> and I then know, guess what? Or yum, yum. It's free. The free. district is giving you that wow. breakfast. Even better. Even better. It's really yummy then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and then from there, you get to listen to none other than the 1999 world champion Toastmaster, Craig Valentine. He's going to be talking to you for that 40, like 40, 45 minutes. Isn't that great? So that's a yum, 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 yum. <laughs> then after that, we're going to go right into our banner parade. Everybody get your banners ready, get your ribbons on there and everything, because you want to show about how your club is succeeding. Put all those on there and say, this is my club, and I'm really proud of it. So we're going to give you that time to be proud of your club. Walk down that, that carpet and say, this is, this is who we are. Then from the banner parade, we're going to go right into our evaluation contest. So we want, like I said, you want to be there for the contestants. From that point on, we're going to have like maybe a five minute break, ten minutes, just a little itty bitty break, because we don't want to break too long, because some of you might leave out. We don't want people leaving. We don't want that to happen, right? So we're going to go right into lunch. And then right from lunch, we're going to hear again, Craig Valentine. Partic he's participating in our process that day. So from that note, from Craig, and then we're going to have some education. Well, between time, we have some educational sessions to give you some more goodies. And then from that note, we're going to go right into our, guess what? No. We want people to walk the red carpet that earned awards last year. They're going to be walking down that red carpet saying, yes, yes distinguished. <laughs> <laughs> President. Yeah, we yeah. want to honor you guys because it took a lot. It takes a lot for clubs to get their DCP points, to get those CCs and their CLs. You know what? As a district, we want to honor you that time. So that's your time to get honored. Then from there, guess what? I think somebody said, we're a speech contest. We want to laugh. And then from that point on, who here did preserve the DTM? I think it's called DTM. Anybody else? Come yeah, in. Well, since you didn't receive the DTM, you will get honored for that, and all the other DTMs will come and give you a big hug because we know it took, it took a while. I got my DTM. In it. It's just not a short thing, it's a journey. So we really honor you for that. And on that note, you'll find out who the person for the humorous one, and at that point, guess what? We'll let you all go home. <laughs> 
How much is the so, contest? So, are we going to participate in the process? Yes. 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 November 7th? Yes. yes. Where? 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 I know. I was wondering. I said, okay, we're saying all this stuff. Be white. Okay, where's, where are we going to go? Countryside Banquets in Countryside, Illinois. Now, there's a little poppy elephant in the room. I know some people know we've changed this more than once. Reason being, we were thinking about our members because it costs to get the venues and we want to make sure that the expense is not on you to pay for something and you paying for the right money. So we wanted to make sure that it was the members paying the right money out for the right venue. We wanted to make sure that, so we had to change the venue on that note. The other venue wanted a lot of money and we didn't want to spend all that money to go with other things for you, for the district, for the clubs, for the area. So we were thinking about you guys when we did this and that's why we had to make the changes. So on that note, I will put it back to... How to much is the conference? How much? How much? $99 for the club. Before. Early bird. That's good, $99, right? Yes. That's a good price. Good price. Yeah. It's a good price. Individual, how much? October 24th. Thank you, sister. October 24th, okay? $99 for the club. Okay? If anybody has any more questions about that, I will be here. Thank you. Ten minute break. I want to point out a couple of items here. The back table, you'll see drinks and some other goodies that have been presented. German is doing his best Anna White for us. <laughs> and for biological issues, go out to the right, go out the door, take a right to the glass wall, turn right, and it'll be about the third entrance on the right. You'll see men in one direction, women in the other. Try not to get them confused. It's a little embarrassing. Then after 10 minutes, we'll come back and we'll get ready to laugh.